American Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai was conceived on June 9, 1915, when 45 business leaders gathered at Shanghai's Palace Hotel. U.S. commercial interests in China were expanding quickly and companies, including National City Bank, DuPont, General Electric and Ford, wanted a voice in the city's burgeoning business community. In the early days, a chamber highlight was the weekly Tiffin luncheon and special dinners attended by 50 to 100 members. By 1919, the chamber had more than 200 members and soon sent its first leader to Washington to lobby for the China Trade Act, the predecessor to today's door knock. Banditry and the safety of shipping on the Yangtze River were prominent concerns among members. More household names joined the organization as well as smaller traders, shipping companies, and service firms. In the early 1920s, the chamber moved into the Dollar Building. The 1930s were a time of burgeoning trade between China and the United States. Iconic American brands such as Buick and Coca-Cola were everywhere. American jazz, dance, and film were popular. It was a time of unbridled wealth, glamour, and overindulgence. But the good times were quickly approaching an end as the Sino-Japanese War drew closer. In 1937, Japanese forces attacked Shanghai. Americans, as well as other foreigners, began to evacuate. The chamber cabled Washington, urging it to demand the withdrawal of Japanese warships from Shanghai Harbor. Even in this time of great instability, the chamber continued to operate. In 1939, a black tie dinner cost $7. All this came to an end with a Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941. After Pearl Harbor, the American population in Shanghai was forced into internment camps, American businesses closed, and the chamber's activities halted. After Japan's defeat, the U.S. business community quickly returned. By August 1945, there were 4,000 Americans in the city, now under Chinese control and subject to Chinese law. The first post-war meeting of the chamber took place at the YMCA in September 1945. But the corruption and inefficiencies of the Kuomintang took their toll on U.S. businesses. By May 1949, when communist troops entered Shanghai, American numbers had fallen to a mere 1,200. The communists froze all bank accounts of foreigners and sealed all warehouses, making business impossible. The U.S. consulate closed its doors in April 1950. A special train evacuated the remaining Americans to Tianjin, where they boarded a ship for San Francisco. Conflict in Korea further strained American-Chinese relations. The estrangement lasted two decades. The deadlock was finally broken by ping-pong diplomacy, Henry Kissinger's secret visit to China in July 1971, and the Shanghai communique. Full diplomatic relations were established in January 1979, followed by a trade agreement temporarily giving China most favored nation status. But it was not until Deng Xiaoping's first wave of economic reforms that U.S. companies were persuaded to return to Shanghai. By 1984, the United States was China's third largest trading partner. Manufacturing and technology sectors dominated U.S. exports to China. Like their predecessors in 1915, the growing number of American executives in Shanghai believed that a business association was essential to their success. The inaugural meeting of the revived chamber took place at the Union Building on Yan'an Road in the fall of 1987 with 35 businessmen in attendance. The chamber's membership expanded quickly, stimulated by Shanghai's explosive development as the city became an international financial and trading center. WTO accession in December 2001 removed tariff barriers and widened the doors to foreign investment. By 2006, the chamber's membership had swelled to more than 3,000. Today's chamber looks very different from 100 years ago. There are 3,600 members. Many are women, and more than 40% are Chinese citizens. Once dominated by manufacturers, service companies are now prolific. 
The chamber's community and business engagement remains centered on Shanghai, but now spreads across the Yangtze River Delta. And now we help Chinese companies explore opportunities in the United States. As we celebrate 100 years of partnership, we look forward to another century of helping American businesses in China and improving the trade relations between our two countries. That is our mission. People. Partnership. Progress. That is AmCham Shanghai.